This lesson deals with Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 3, starting on page 54. Let me start out by stating Thevenin's theorem. A two-terminal linear circuit with sources can be replaced by the open circuit voltage in series with the input resistance of the circuit with all the independent sources set equal to zero. I can show this in terms of a picture. Suppose I take my circuit and separate it into a source and a load. I can replace the source circuit by one voltage source and one resistance, where I find the voltage source by removing the load circuit and finding the voltage across terminals A and B. The resistance can be found by taking this same circuit and setting all the independent sources equal to zero and finding the resistance looking in terminals A and B. Now why would that be true? Consider taking the load circuit off and replacing it by a current source, which is capable of having all possible values of current. Now let me use superposition to find the voltage V test. V test due to the first source would be leaving I test here and setting all of the independent sources equal to zero in the source box. The ratio of this voltage to this current would be the resistance looking in the box, and we're going to define that as the Thevenin resistance. You can also then multiply this out, that V test prime is just R Thevenin times I test. So this is the results for the voltage V test due to the first source. Now set this source equal to zero, make it an open circuit, and find the voltage across here, we'll call that V test double prime, and this would be due to all the independent sources inside the box. And we could use superposition to find this or any of our theorems or algorithms. This voltage is also called the Thevenin voltage, or sometimes the open circuit voltage, because we've removed the load circuit. Now add the two results together. So I have V test due to the first source, and then V test due to all the sources inside the box with the load removed. We found this relationship for V test due to the first source, and then found the Thevenin voltage. Can you make a circuit that has these same equations? And if you do, you have a model or an equivalent circuit. We're applying a test current to the box on the previous page, and I want to put together this formula if I can. Now it looks like I'm adding two voltages together. It's all like a series combination. The current I test is coming in here, so I can create this drop with a series resistor. So if I write the equations for this box, the rise in voltage would equal I test times R Thevenin plus V Thevenin. So that's the equations for this circuit, and this is the equation for my original circuit, and so we have an equivalence between terminals A and B. Our next theorem is called Norton's theorem. A two-terminal linear circuit with sources can be replaced by the short circuit current in parallel with the input resistance of the circuit with all the independent sources set equal to zero. Let's take a look at what that would mean in terms of some schematic drawings. So again, I have circuit broken into two parts. I'll call this my load and this is my source circuit. And I'll replace the source circuit by a current source in parallel with the resistance. And again, it's gonna create an effect at terminals A and B, just like the original box. We're going to find this current source by taking the load off and shorting the terminals together and finding the current that flows from A to B. And then that'll be our current source here, and the arrows will be pointing from B to A. Take this box without the short circuit, look back into it with all the independent sources equal to zero, and we've got the Norton resistance. So we can replace a very complex circuit, which is simply one current source and one resistance. Now again, why would that be true? Take the load off and put a voltage source here, and let this voltage be capable of all possible values. Let's solve for the current I test for this box uh, using superposition. Let's set all of the independent sources equal to zero in the box, and then we'll find the current, we'll call it I test prime, due to V test. Now the ratio of V test to the current going in this direction, where it's minus I test prime, is the resistance looking back into the box, an equivalent resistance. We're going to call that our Norton resistance. Let's just cross multiply here, then I test prime is equal to V test divided by minus R Norton. Now let's set this equal to zero and find the current due to all the sources inside the box. We'll call that I test double prime. And that would be a short circuit where our I test is defined in this direction. And that'll be our Norton current. It's also sometimes called short circuit current. And again, note the direction that this is flowing in. It's from A to B. Now let's add the two results together. So here's our first result, and here's our second result. So let's see if we can make up a circuit that has this same set of equations. 
Now what I've got is a current plus a current, so that sounds like I've got something in parallel. Now what I was doing in the testing was I was putting a voltage source across terminals A and B and measuring the current I test. Since I test is equal to I Norton, I'll put a current source over here at the same direction. And then I've got a current, which is V test divided by R Norton. So let's put a resistor across here. And the current that flows in this resistor would be in this direction. And that would be the voltage this way, which is minus V test divided by R Norton. So this box has the same equations as our original circuit. And so we say that they're equivalent. So Thevenin's theorem allows you to take a very complex circuit and replace it by only one voltage source and one resistance. Norton's theorem lets you do the same thing, but we're replacing the circuit by one current source and one resistance. Now we have source transformations, and so there must be some relationship between these two circuits. Let me state this here in terms of another property. The Norton resistance is the same as the Thevenin resistance, but it's also equal to the ratio of V Thevenin to I Norton, in other words, the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current, again, with the circuit load being removed. You know, why would this be true? I found R Norton and R Thevenin in the same way, by setting all the independent sources and looking back into the box. And so they were found the same way, and so therefore equal to each other. Now let's do a source transformation, go from here to here. The Norton current would be the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance. So now if I just flip this over here, I have V Thevenin divided by I Norton. We could find R Thevenin by looking back into our box with all the independent sources set equal to zero. And this might be series and parallel combinations, or we could do a Y to delta. But it can also be found by taking the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. Because we're shorting and opening things, sometimes that's a little bit easier to find in a series and parallel and Y to delta calculations. We'll also see this be very useful in chapter four when we have a thing called controlled sources. And this is Thevenin's and Norton's theorems and how to use them to characterize a circuit.